Yep. Uh, and yep. by the way, uh, it's like uh, another great way of looking at the rapture resurrection is imagine you are on top of a tall building and you have to walk a type rope and the type rope goes into the clouds. Okay, and you can't see it. It's covered by clouds and smog. But the fact of the matter is that rope is tied to something on the other side. Yep, that's right. That's a good way of looking at it. So that's you're walking that right. type rope. I was like, I don't see it, I don't, but it's tied to something. Yep. I'm going to reach yep. it. I don't know how far it is ahead of me. I don't know if it's a mile, two miles, or ten miles. But I'm walking because this rope is tight. Yep. It's no slack. Peter says God is not slack and it's coming. Okay. So there's no slack in the type rope line, is there? Nope. It's just right. the fact that we can't see the end we of the type rope it. line. That's, that's a great It's analogy. going to happen regardless, folks. It's okay? there. At a that's certain a point, analogy. it's been set in stone even before the foundation of the earth. These next two questions, again, I'll read them together because they kind of pair similarly. The first one comes from Sammy Thompson, which says, Is God delaying the rapture to give people more time to get saved, or will it happen ready or not? And then Dory Bennett writes in, I have a question. Before God comes back to rapture us, is he waiting on the last person to get saved before the rapture? And how does this relate to the tribulation saints? Um, I'm going to stab at this one first because, and I know not everybody's going to agree with me, so show me some grace if you don't agree with me on this, but... I don't particularly, I don't like, like, the traditional dispensational view is like God is waiting on the, that last Gentile to get saved. I don't particularly believe in that because God's not a respecter of persons. He's not waiting on, you know, one last person and, and holding up the rapture for all the rest of us saying, okay, we got to wait on this last guy to figure it out, okay, or last gal to figure it out. That's not the case. He's not waiting on anyone to get saved. But he does have a time set. I don't think it's delayed at all. We perceive a delay because we see all the convergence of events. We see the signs and we think, wow, you know, how long is this going to take? I mean, this actually ties into one of the comments in the questions. I'll, I'll pull this up real quick if I can find it. Someone had asked about the Revelation 12 sign. So we might as well tackle that now. You know, the Revelation 12 sign. Does it still mean something? Does not mean anything? You know, well, see, this is why I say we perceive the delay because that thing came a little over seven years ago. And we're like, well, the rapture should have happened. That's all only our understanding, but God has the time already set. Was that a seven-year warning? Maybe it'll be a 10-year warning. God forbid. We don't know, okay? It's still significant. You can't take away from that Revelation 12 sign and say that it was not a significant, mm -hmm. you know, sign. But that's the point. God knows the rapture. We don't. So, you know... If you're the last Gentile to get saved, let me just say that you are one lucky son of a gun. God is not waiting on the rapture for anybody. He has a, a time set, and when it happens, if you're that last Gentile, man, you got lucky. Um, so that's my that's my hot take on it. If you guys have anything you want to add, or we can move on to the next question, whatever you want to do. I, I think it's I agree with you that that you know there's God's not waiting for any one person. It doesn't work like that, and I think that. God has a plan and he's going to enact on that plan. And I think it's our job to get on board with his plan. Some people say, well, the last person hears the gospel, then the, tri the rapture should be triggered. Now, folks, I believe that, that when the numbers go down to the smallest numbers, this is my opinion, that the smallest numbers of people, and, and it's down to the last person, well, the people that, are, that he thinks, well, it's going to take more than, it's going to take the tribulation to save all these people. Is they just ain't budget. They're not going to do it. That's when I think the rapture will happen. That's just my opinion. Now, I know that it, it, that could be a long time before that happens. I get it. But God's timing is everything. It's perfect. Maybe that all got timed with the wars that are going on. So when it gets down to those last people, God's got to time the wars with down to that last bunch of people. So if he says, well, these people that they just won't get saved and they'll take the tribulations, that's when he'll initiate all the wars right around that same time. See, God's timing is perfect. So that must be getting really close. Just look what happened just yesterday with Trump winning. So that last bunch, it's going to take more to get them saved. That's when he timed it all perfect. So here we go. Right around the time of his, him being an elect, not the president yet. So this 60 days must be the wind down time. That's just my opinion. We'll see. Uh, the rapture resurrection is set in eternity past. Eternity past, eternity future is official timeline God looked at 
all of us from start to finish, the same timeline that John the Beloved saw them wrote the book of Revelation. Right? He God created his whole timeline in the spiritual realm, and even the demons have access to this thing. They can see some of it, they can understand it to a point. Okay. So John saw us in heaven. He saw this timeline in heaven. I don't know how it works, but thing as it may, when God created it, he went through this whole thing already. That's why he can just give us the information. He gave us the Bible and say, hey, look, I already saw what's going to happen here. I got this model set up over here, this whole spiritual model built. And this is what happens here, here, and here, and here, and here. So I can give you all the prophecies of my son coming. He saw the whole thing. And he also put the rapture resurrection at a certain point, too. And it hasn't budged. Okay. So from our layman's perspective, it looks like he keeps kicking the can down the road. Right. But he hasn't. Okay. It's just from our layman's perspective. All right, so we're not looking for a person, one last person to get saved. Someone's being ignorant or being bullheaded, all right, holding up the entire Bible prophecy of the universe here because of one person. When the rapture resurrection takes place, God knows who will be that person at that point, though. There will be a last person, Derek, mm -hmm. but that person doesn't know it. Only God does because he knows right when the rapture takes place at that point split hair moment he can see okay this guy this guy this person this girl this young lady here old woman here young man he sees everybody right at that split moment that got saved yep. at that point according to his timeline but he's not waiting on one person yep. uh, and yep. by the way uh, it's like uh, another great way of looking at the rapture resurrection is imagine you are on top of a tall building and you have to walk a type rope and the type rope goes into the clouds Okay, and you can't see it. It's covered by clouds and smog. But the fact of the matter is that rope is tied to something on the other side. Yep, that's right. That's a good way of looking at it. So that's you're walking a right. type rope. I was like, I don't see it, I don't, but it's tied to something. Yep. I'm going to reach yep. it. I don't know how far it is ahead of me. I don't know if it's a mile, two miles, or ten miles. But I'm walking because this rope is tight. Yep. It's no slack. Peter says God is not slack and it's coming. Okay, so there's no slack in the type rope line, is there? Nope. It's just right. the fact that we can't see the end we of the type of line. That's, that's a great It's analogy. going to happen regardless, folks. It's okay? there. At a that's certain a point, it's analogy. been set in stone even before the foundation of the earth. Mm -hmm. This is this is another question. I should have lumped this in with the other two because this one talks about a delay also. It says, question. This comes from <laughs> Stokely. Stokely, Stokely nice. and his boys. Question. Do any of you know who George at Return of the King is? He talks about a possible delay to the rapture because of a huge war in heaven right now. Well, I don't. I, maybe you guys. I don't know George at Return of the King. I don't know if any of you guys are familiar, but I know my whole channel. my whole take on the the rapture delay thing. Again, you know, a lot of people get this from the the Book of Daniel, where Daniel started praying, and there was a twenty one day you know battle in heaven until Daniel's prayer could be answered because the angel had to fight with the Prince of Persia and all this other stuff, and it took twenty one days. So a lot of people kind of like to take that template and lay it on a delay and what this often i see this a lot when somebody's somebody sets a date and their date fails then the next go-to is well that's because there has to be a 21 delay in heaven that's like saving face like oh my date failed so now let me figure something else to stretch it out for three more weeks i you know there could be war going on in heaven right now we don't see it i don't see any reason why why you know i mean it listen again there's no delay if, if God wanted a delay, he would tell us that. He would tell us, hey, you know, there's going to be a date, but you're going to have to wait a little extra long. He doesn't say anything about a delay. So I, I think, me personally, I think the whole, there's war going on in heaven all the time, and I think the whole delay is just an excuse to stretch out a failed watch date. What do you have to say, Josh? You've been live for 11, 100, 111, guys, right there. Nice. <laughs> Keep I, seeing it, man. <laughs> I, I think that... The rapture happens when the church age closes. I'm, I'm talking, uh, you know, if we have time to win souls, I think we're going to see a little bit of time left. I know that's not what people want to hear, but it's it's a possibility is all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. It says that God is, it says that he's patient and long suffering for the fruit of the earth that none should perish. And so I want to look at scripture on both sides of the coin. I say, well, it could be imminent any day now, but also I think that being about the father's business and, and, and winning souls and, and being out there preaching, teaching and encouraging people. I think that's an important aspect of our faith as well. Uh, not to just lump everything into that. Um, and I'm not saying it's self-centered, uh, but constantly focus on getting out of here. But we also have a job to do and a commission that Jesus did give us to do before he ascended into heaven. 
Here's a, here's mm -hmm. a good response here from Kimberly Hill saying the virgins fell asleep because there was a delay. Doesn't it say that? So, you know, we do want to we do want to look at the whole word of God. And I'm glad, you know, if you can if you can point something out from Scripture that would help me to understand something better. I'm always glad to listen. I I'm, believe me, my ears are always open to Scripture. And uh, it does say that. It says, I think it's Matthew 25, the parable of the virgins, which doesn't necessarily really apply to us as the church. But the parable of the virgins says, when the bridegroom was delayed, behold, all the virgins slumbered and slept. Not just the five wise, the five foolish, all of them slumbered and slept. But again, when we're talking about delays, when the bridegroom is delayed, was the bridegroom delayed or was that a perceived delay on their part? Because the bridegroom was right on time according to when he was coming to snatch his bride. See, that was the ancient Jewish wedding custom was that the bridegroom would come at an hour when the bride was didn't know it. And they would come snatch the bride away. So the, the bridegroom knew when he was coming. He wasn't delayed. He wasn't waiting on his tux or something like that. He knew when he was coming. But the, 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 the uh, bridesmaids perceived a delay is my take on that go it, ahead Josh. It, what do you it think? says right here in chapter 25 verse 4 but the <laughs> wise took oil in their lamp vessels with their lamps while the bridegroom tarried they all slumbered and slept right that's that's the 1611 kjv so that's that's verse 5 in, in chapter 25 for the parable of the 10 birds yep yep so um Let's take another one. This one's from Kimberly Lou says, what does it mean that we will judge the angels? What are you guys take on that? Hmm. Hmm. That's, that's an interesting one. It is. <laughs> yeah, that's probably pretty much the uh, white throne judgment right there. I believe. Like the fallen angels, it, would you say, Bob? Yeah. We will judge I believe we'll have a part in the white throne judgment. Some people think we're just going to sit there and just be in this big audience and just watch. Which... I think that could be the case. Maybe not all of us will be called to be judges, okay? But some of us will, or maybe all of us will. Look, that's a lot of people to get through, and I know we're outside of time where we don't have to worry about time, but it has to take a long time to do that. <laughs> I mean, can we, we, we have to worry about time, but so we could sit here and spend two million years doing this, and I have to think about it, but I'm like, I don't want to sit there all day and watch this. Okay, let's get this done, moved on. You know what I'm saying? So if all of us are judging, well, then in that case, you got a few billion of us sitting on thrones judging, and then God judged certain, like, sex the sexually immoral and stuff like that. I think those are reserved for him personally. So I might only get maybe six or seven people I got to judge, and I'll be done. You know, that's all it will take. They think about 100 billion people have lived on this planet. Total, they think, 100 billion. Right, I don't know how true that is. Maybe because we're already at eight billion, so it probably makes sense. But hundred billion mm -hmm. humans have been born. All right, now that's up till now. At the end of the thousand year reign, might be looking at maybe one hundred and fifty billion, something like that. Yeah. Okay. So still one hundred fifty billion divided by a few billion of us who are judges, maybe about fifteen fifteen people a piece that we'll get, and it won't take that long to judge them. Get it done in a day. You know, you know, another no. possibility, and I mean, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just throwing stuff out there because, you know, just RP brains, I don't think can quite fathom what we're going to be doing up there. But a thought that came into my mind was, has anybody, you remember the stories of like when Caesar would have his games in the Roman Colosseums, you know, and the, the gladiators would go out there and the Caesar would decide if they were to live or they were to die by either giving them the thumbs up or the thumbs down, right? We've all heard that story, right? So like, I wonder what if we were in this big heavenly amphitheater? And God is sitting there as the judge, and we're just all kind of witnesses in this big heavenly amphitheater. And there's an announcer that brings each individual angel out. And, you know, the announcer says, and here we have the angel Gabriel. He brought the message of the birth of Christ to Mary. And, like, and we're all like, yay, yay. And so God goes, you know, like this and gives him a reward. And he goes on off the stage. And then all of a sudden the announcer says, and now over here. We have Lucifer, the one that rebelled against the great and most high God. And we all go, boo, boo. And God goes, you know, like, <laughs> I, I wonder, I wonder if that's similar to like what we're going to do up there. I don't know. You know, well, go that way. It's interesting to think of though, right? Um, well, you know, yeah. we don't know. We haven't gotten there yet, but it did say in the Bible that we will be in charge over angels in that. Yes. Correct. So yes. what kind of in charging job will we have? Will we be giving them specific commands to do this for us and do that? 
go and fetch something for we need something really quick for this there's a number of things that that we can go with that you know i don't know but i know that will we have specific jobs during the millennial for an example will we be going back and forth to heaven and earth i'm sure we can in a mere thought of a second but we will be given jobs specifically based on maybe a ranking system i don't know uh we won't bear a signus like in Star Trek, I know that. We'll just have, we'll probably have our white robes, which we will, because we'll be many, we'll, have, we'll be robed in, in white linen. But specifically, based on your position and how you lived your life during this time, the, the obedience and all that, you know how that goes. Well, based on that, I think, is where you'll sit in authority. But we'll be, also says we'll be, be in charge of, of, tri of tribes nations yep so yep. wow that's pretty big big responsibility which i have i would be i'd be up to of course so i get there i say whatever you want god i'm there you know and yep. rick's gonna be like rick go now will we have the same name i think we'll be given different names when we get there so rick is out of here when i'm out of here my name is gone too so bob you will not be called bob anymore i won't be called rick then what kind of names will we have I would like to just have a sneak preview of what the names will be like up there. I'm sure they're going to be, well, we know Lucifer, that's a name. He was given that name. So these names, will they be simple like ours? Or will they be very like, sophisticated? Well, Lucifer sounds, what do you think? Does that sound right about a simple name, you know? so well, pretty, pretty sophisticated name. It is. Basil, Raphael, you know, all these names they have. So we don't know. So, we don't know yeah. what names we'll have. Yep. And, and our identity, will we look just like, I know I won't look just like this. I think we'll look younger, of course, but will we be identified? Will I still look like a young version of Rick? Probably. I think so. I think he said so, we yeah. would know our loved oh, yeah. ones and our friends in heaven. So by it's identifying and he, also head knowledge. He's going to look like his email picture that he's got, that awesome picture you got, Rick. <laughs> what? That awesome email, you know, when you send out emails to everybody. I'm looking awesome out the window. Picture. Yeah, it looks Yeah, good. Bob yeah. likes that picture. So is my yeah. dad. Yeah, I'm looking good out pick. the window and yeah, hoping for the yeah. day to come. Family, have you heard the massive impact that Feed My Sheep Today is now making on the growth of the body of Christ here in the final hours? And the question is, are you a part of it? Will you benefit from this work being done here? at the judgment seat of Christ after the rapture resurrection. If not, listen up. We all get to go to heaven because of what Jesus did, but how well you live in heaven is all based on the work that you do here right now after you've been saved. 2 Corinthians 5.10 states, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Now, the bad here does not mean your sin. Your sin was dealt with at the cross. That's all done with. The bad that Apostle Paul is talking about here are works that you thought were profitable to God's kingdom, that were fruitful, but they actually weren't. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 13 through 15 claims that these works will be wood, hay, and stubble that will be burned up by the fire of God and turned to ash. Verse 12, now if any man should build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work for what sort it is. Now, you want to avoid all the ash? This is what you need to do. It says to build on this foundation. What's the foundation? The body of Christ. A spiritual corporate body of believers. And how do you expand this corporate body of believers? By adding more believers. And once they're sealed in the corporate body of Christ, you continue to cultivate them, educate them, encourage them, pray for them. All of this is considered gold, silver, and precious stones. Anything outside of that is considered wood, hay, and stubble. Like investing your time, energy, and money into a brick and mortar church, repaving the parking lot, the upkeep of the building, and all the stuff like that. That's considered wood, hay, and stubble. Here at Feed My Sheep today, we don't deal with brick and mortars. 
we only deal with the cutting edge of the building of the body of Christ. That's it. For over 13 years now, Feed My Sheep Today has been building the world's largest network of missionaries, evangelists, preachers, pastors, teachers, and many workers in the body of Christ, all working together to share the gospel and the hope and love of Jesus Christ with new believers. And we do this by providing them all the funds they need to purchase the Bibles that they'll need to hand out for free to all the new believers. And these Bibles will be in their own native language and KJV Bibles for those who can read English. They will also be able to purchase all the humanitarian relief aid that they will need to give to these new believers that they will be interacting with when they first come into these village areas. And this process works very well. First, we will show them the love of Jesus by providing them all this aid that they'll need, feed them, clothe them, give them blankets, take care of medical needs, essentially show them the love of Jesus Christ, get them up to par. And then after we're done doing that, we will show them the eternal love of Jesus by sharing the gospel of grace with them through regular preaching and even through video projection on a silver screen outlining the life of Jesus Christ and what he did to save them. And trust me, these video presentations are very effective. So as you can see right here, everything is in place. All you need to do is just provide the seed and you will see the full benefits of this entire operation. The only question is now, how big of a piece of the operation will be enough to benefit you and your family for eternity in heaven. So if you feel that tug in your heart right now, please don't ignore it. That's just God saying to you, hey, I can use you here right now to complete a great work on your behalf that will bless you for eternity. All you have to do is go to our official website, it's feedmysheeptoday.org. Link is in the description box below. There, you can give by credit card, PayPal, bank draft, and many other online options as well, like Google Pay and more. And family, check this out. Now, you can easily convert crypto and stocks into a donation as well. Any stock, any crypto, as easy as one, two, three, and you're done. Or, if you don't want to mess with any of this, all you have to do is just pick up your smartphone and text SHEEP. To 801 801 and you can very easily give right there don't like giving online no problem send your support by mail to feed my sheep today p.o box 568 Sherville, indiana 46375 want to make a big impact but don't have the money to do it right now just become an easy feed monthly sustainer we greatly need monthly sustainers this allows Feed My Sheep today to plan for next month by making solid commitments to the leadership in these areas that we will be visiting because we know that the funds will be there at this point next month to take care of their needs. Plus, it's easier for you. Just set it and forget it. And this frees you up to do other things for the Lord while this is working on automatic on your behalf. And you can easily make changes at any time. And make sure to track your investment by following all of our other social media platforms. Links are in the description box below. Feed My Sheep today is ready to partner with you to make your impact in God's kingdom today. Thank you all so much for the many years of support. Let's Finish strong together and make God. Yep. Mm -hmm. These last two questions, I'm going to actually pull this up from St. JPM because these last two questions I have tie into exactly what St. JPM just asked. And then I've got about nine more in the uh, comments we can take care of. But Time for Me to Fly says, question, what do you guys think of MBS? That's Mohammed bin Salman of the uh, Saudi kingdom. Of MBS and all having these peace meetings and MD... 30809 says, question, how and when does the peace and safety, the sudden destruction come into play? Who is the destruction on? And, of course, this ties right into what St. GPM is saying. Do you think that because Trump became president, you think that we're heading towards the false peace? Well, listen, I think we are in the sense that he was the original author of the Abraham Accords, which were never really fully implemented, you know, and... 
I think once he gets into office, he's going to probably want to finish that deal. He's probably going to want to firm that up, which, you know, that's what Daniel talks about is strengthening the covenant. You know, I think he's going to want to firm up that that peace covenant. And uh, that all ties into the peace and safety. You know, now, Mohammed bin Salman of the, the Saudi and Arabian kingdom is probably the biggest player. He's probably the biggest chess piece on the board over there as far as, you know, getting him on board for Middle East peace. Because, uh, you know, that that's probably arguably the largest, most powerful Arab nation over there is Saudi Arabia. Uh, but peace and safety, you know, it's who's the destruction on? I think it's it's on the, the nation of Israel personally, because when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes on them. And I think it's referring to those that have made that peace covenant, not only Israel, but the Middle East countries and maybe even America. If we play part of that, if we decide, like we were talking earlier about the, the New Madrid fault, if we decide to get in there and, you know, divide the land up and say, you know, yeah, we're going to make peace for Israel. Israel, you have your temple and, you know, Palestinians, you have your state and just divide that land up and everything will be peaceful between all your neighbors. And everybody thinks, yeah, this is great. Peace and safety. Everybody that did that, sudden destruction is going to come on them. So it won't be on us. Paul says it comes on them, not on us. We're out of here. We get raptured out that, of here. That brings the question over the next 60 days, will they declare peace now that Trump is in there? And all of a sudden, hey, we got peace now, guys. He's back. We're going to have peace. And all of a sudden, sudden destruction, Iran starts attacking over the next 30 days. That could be that, folks. Yep. Well, somebody uh, with Iran, I think, I think Iran should attack. Because they said they're going to do it right after the elections are over. I, mean, I already heard that they were going to attack. They're going to command them with everything they have because now there's no hope. Just go all in, all right? Go hit Israel with everything we got and, and see where it lands. In order for there to be peace, Iran needs to let out a lot of steam. Yep. And essentially, you got to, I mean, Trump's already telling Israel, blow them up. Blow them to kingdom come. Oh, they're yeah. a threat to Israel and they're a threat to our nation. They threaten us all the time with nukes. Blow them, hit them with everything you got. I mean, next time Iran does anything to threaten Israel, Israel's going to be like, well, Trump's in office now. So, uh, yeah, why don't we go ahead and just annihilate our enemies now and we should be good to go. We should not see any sanctions. We'll continue getting aid from America because now Trump's in charge. We're good to go. Let's take them out. Yep. Yeah, Israel will break them off for sure. Yeah, it's got rapture yeah. ter- rip, written all over that, buddy. I can't yep. wait to see all this go down. They'll bomb now. Damascus first. Yeah. I don't we've got about a, another we half a dozen questions here. We can we can tackle what we've got. That These are all fresh and new that just came in in the comments. This one's kind of a toughie. This one actually is a gentleman. I know he's been on with uh, with Shane before, and I don't think he doesn't share our, our pre-tribulation views. So this might be a little tough one. So let's look at the scripture that he's referencing, and then let's see what, uh, what everybody's take on this is. So he says, why is the multitude of revelation... 14, 14 through 16, taken out of the earth at the end of the seven-year period and taken back to heaven instead of staying here on earth at the end of the seven years. So let me read the scripture that he's referring to. It says, Then I looked, and behold, I saw a white cloud, and on the cloud sat one like the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud, Thrust in your sickle and reap, for the time has come for you to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Well, my first take in on this is, I don't see any reference to any seven years in that scripture. So, you know, I don't know how you can necessarily say that this scripture of Revelation 14, 14 through 16 is referring to people that were harvested, you know, before the seven years, at the end of the seven years, it doesn't really give that reference. So, um, you know, it would seem logical that there's going to be a pre-tribulation rapture. You know, there's, there, we don't have time to go into that whole thing because there's just so many things in the Bible that, you know, that point towards that. But so, you know, assuming that, like we, we've got this one group of people that has been harvested, the dead in Christ rise, rise first, and yeah. then those who are alive and remain. So, and then there's a group of tribulation saints. So we know that. We know that much, uh, you know, but as far as like, you know, taken out of the earth at the end of the seven year, taken back to heaven, uh, you know, I, that, like I said, that gets cloudy for me because that's yeah. not in the, that's not specifically in that scripture. So I would have to have another scripture reference to tie to it, to make some sense out of that question. What do you have, Josh? Uh, you know, there's, there's different harvests and we know that the barley represents the dead in christ the wheat represents the living in christ and the 
line or great harvest represents the tribulation saints you know what i mm-hmm. mean and he's clearly referencing the tribulation saints yep yep that right. that would be my take yeah plus uh jesus talks about uh, when he returns what does he do he sends the angels his harvesters they gather the tares that's when you say one to be working the field one to be taken one to be left he sends the angels, the harvesters, to gather all the tares together because they're put in the bundles and they prepare them to throw them into hell. So if you talk about these multitude being caught up, that's a, that, that's the difference between the rapture and the second coming. People think those angels, when they're gathering these people, that they're being taken up in heaven. No, they're not. Look, we can move at the speed of light because we can appear anywhere on the planet within a moment, a twinkle of an eye. But human beings, no, they have to be taken there physically by an angel, however that works. So angels have to go all over the earth, gather all those people, and whether they are tares gathered into bundles thrown into hell, or wheat gathered into the barn, or sheep or goats, they have to be taken to the Valley of Jehoshaphat for judgment. They have to be gathered. They can't move at the speed of light. They're human beings in their fallen form still. They're not glorified yet. It's a massive gathering. It's a massive harvest. All right. So anytime they talk about Jesus gathering people at the end, like or in the four gospels, that's just us showing up and angels going before us, grabbing people on the face of the earth and moving them around. That's all. That's, that's all that's going on. Nobody's being taken to heaven. The Bible says all four corners of the earth, the four winds of the earth, four winds of heaven, the first heavens. The heavens around the earth, not the second and third heavens, only the heavens around the earth, the first heavens. So this would mean people who are gathered, who are up in planes and stuff like that, who are in the air of the first heavens. And they have to be gathered to Jesus for judgment. And that's only done with an angel picking you up and carrying you to that judgment. That's all that is. It's not a rapture at the end. Nobody gets raptured at the end. That's retarded. We don't go up there and do a U-turn rapture. You know how silly that would be? Imagine being caught up in all the horses. You see this big, brutal horses coming at you. Like, and you Just to do a up, U-turn. Like, whoa, yeah, whoa. that would be odd. Awesome. They'll run into really each awesome. other. Yeah, That'd it'll be, be retarded. Mess. That's a stoop. Nobody gets raptured at the end. Yeah, the tribulation. When yeah, Jesus is coming back, they would have just going to all turn around. I, I've heard that saying before. It doesn't make any sense for him just to go yeah, back yeah, up again. Where is he yeah. going back up for? Come on, that's people. Stupid. 